So what is going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here and I am back today to talk to you guys about something interesting that I've discovered about the new battling boxer support and we got us like a really good chunk of support here. It's not everything that the deck needs, but I think with like a card or two more, I heard there's supposed to be a rank up magic as well, which we'll get into. This support could actually take Battling Boxer back into the main stage. You know, it's like Konami watched Creed 3, you know, they bawled their eyes out when dude's mom died or something. I don't know. And they were just like, you know what? This is it. This is our time to honor Michael B. Jordan and create more battling boxer support. And so we got three new main deck monsters. We got a new counter trap that activates outside of battle phase, because if you remember the last one or the last two, actually, because there's two of them, there is last counter and there's joke counter, both of which can only be activated during the battle phase, because of course they're battling boxers. But this one, is a more generic one for any monster effect. Now we'll get into the itty bitty of this particular battling boxer card and why it's not like perfect, but it's really, really good. Oh, also, I just want to say I love the fucking artwork for this card because it is literally the episode that Alito, he took, uh, he took control of Nistro and then uh, Yuma had to do like a double duel against him and Nistro and Nistro literally literally fucking died and got revived like multiple times being uh alito's fucking slave and so um i i think i don't remember exactly how the duel ended but i think yuma had to take number 64 right which is lionheart which is a card that alito forced nistro to use and lionheart and number uh 105 over here or that, that's that's c105 actually so c105 and 64 over here are just like, you know, giving each other like the, the most anime fucking um, double punch that, you know, you've ever seen on a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card, right? So I love the artwork for this card, love what they're going for. And this new support is really going to bring life back into this deck, especially because of Promoter. Promoter is by far the best card that they basically made for this deck. It basically says, um, tribute this card, rescue rabbit for battling boxers but you're limited into battling into only summoning battling boxers to turn you activate this effect meaning just like your battling boxer switch hitter um you are locked into only playing with battling boxer the turn that you use promoter or switch hitter's effect and this is not just extra deck this is main deck as well so that, that also means that switch hitter um if you normal summon him and use his effect you cannot like you can't summon like Pankatrops, like you have to rely on the deck's engine to um, basically play the deck effectively. And I think they've made a really good resource engine with this deck, like with a lot of follow up and a lot of um, recursion that I think it's actually OK that they have this limitation. This is one of the times where this limitation is actually really good. So basically, Promoter says you tribute him, you special him to battling boxers with different names from your deck, and then you get to banish this card from your graveyard and increase or decrease the levels of all battling boxers you currently control by one, uh, which is great because you have battling boxer has a rank three that they never summon, and battling boxer also has a new rank five that um, we're gonna, that we're going to get into. Uh, but most importantly, this is the probably the second best card out of all the new support. It is Battling Boxer Uppercutter. And so what it does is that when it's normal or special summon, you get to add a Battling Boxer monster or a counter, counter trap card from your deck to your hand. Now, um, this is real funny because not only can he search the new Battling Boxer uh, counter trap and he can also search Flame Bell counter which also works because he's the only battling boxer monster with 200 defense, but um, he could also search assault counter. So assault counter finally has a normal summonable searcher <laughs> in 2023. So assault decks, you know, rise up. That's not even the only thing, right? So if he's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can either summon a battling boxer from your graveyard or set a counter counter trap from your grave, meaning that you can get either you can either reset one of your counter trap cards 
or you can special summon one of your battling boxer monsters, both of which are amazing effects. Now you're locked into only being able to use one effect per turn, so the turn that you summon it, you cannot get the graveyard effect and vice versa. But because of the new exceed monsters, you're going to see that that won't be a problem at all. And our third new main deck monster is Battling Boxer Chief Second. Basically, it is a hand trap that also lets you normal summon twice. So it's a little weird because you do want to draw him, but you also want to summon him from deck off a of promoter. Uh, it, it's it, it's definitely a card that you're still gonna max out because um, it just has this amazing effect of during your main phase, you can normal summon a battling boxer in addition to your normal summoner set, meaning regardless of what other battling boxer monster you draw, you're going to want to go into chief second. <clears throat> and when your opponent's monster declares an attack and you control a fire and or warrior monster, which means this is also generic fire warrior support, you can special summon this card from your hand and if you do negate the attack, then banish one monster on field until the end phase. And that's crazy because literally fire warriors have never had a hand trap, right? Like Infer Nobles can use this card as a hand trap, which I, I think is, is actually kind of amazing. Um, so yeah, those are the three new main deck monsters. The cross counter is now something really interesting that we can start to dig our teeth into. So when your opponent activates a monster effect, you destroy a battling boxer or number Xyz monster, right? So the monster you destroy has to be an Xyz, but it can be either a number or a battling boxer. Now, clearly, you know, your battling boxers are going to limit you to only being able to summon battling boxers, but that also means that um, potentially in the future, uh, Utopia decks or something of that nature could take advantage of this card. And then you have to, and after your monster is destroyed, now your monster does have to be destroyed because it says negate the activation and if you do that, destroy that opponent's monster. Um, so that means if you try to mix this with something like a lead yoke, lead yoke and you try to detach for lead yokes uh, to avoid destruction, um, cross counter would not be able to destroy the opponent's monster. Now, cross counter has to be able to destroy the opponent's monster to activate the little uh, dotted effect here. So, ju so just remember that you have to be able to destroy your own battling box Xerxes monster to destroy your opponent's monster to activate the final effect of this card. And basically what happens is you get to special summon a battling boxer exceed monster from your X deck with a different name than the destroyed monster. And if you do attach this card to it as material and you're like, okay, Nistro, well, why would we care about summoning a battling boxer with one material? What new battling boxer could possibly be so good that summoning it with one material is, is like a good thing. And now we enter battling boxer King Dempsey when he is special summoned, not when he's exceed summoned, when he's special summoned, you can take a level four lore, fire warrior or battling boxer spell trap from deck and either add it to hand or mill it to your graveyard. And the amazing thing about this is that he gets to either be a fire warrior searcher. He is basically broad bull for fire warriors or he gets to add the counter trap, which actually allows you some versatility in your combo lines. Because if you go promoter and you summon uppercutter, you could search a counter trap with uppercutter, but because you also are going to summon chief second and you wanna get that second normal summon, you're going to go into your switch hitter instead, right? So you're going to want to search another battling boxer half the time when you go into uppercutter versus with King Dempsey, he can, he could add a fire warrior if you already happen to have your counter trap card, but um, most of the times, you know, you if you uh, go through the combo line, you're going to want to take the battling boxing spell and trap card the first time at the very least, and then you're going to loop this battling boxer uh, counter trap card multiple times because of uppercutter and Dempsey, and there is actually a way that. And thanks to Dempsey's second effect, there's actually it's actually really easy to make that happen. And so his second effect is that you can detach one material from a monster you control, not including, like it's not just him, it's any exceed monster on your field. You can detach one as part of the effect, which means this would trigger either a glass jaw or an uppercutter. 
This would trigger either effect. Um, and then your opponent cannot target battling boxes you control with card effects. That is a quick effect that can be activated at any point during the turn. So at any point after you activate your cross counter, now cross counter does have to attach to the monster and there is a workaround for that. A cross, so let's say you summon Dempsey off of cross counter's final effect. The Dempsey will have a material, but because its second effect is a quick effect, there actually is a way we can play around that. And we're gonna see that a little later, but we're gonna get into this final monster, number C79, Battle and Boxer, Commander, Commander Caesar, right? So he gains 200 attack for each material, and then once per turn, if your opponent would special summon a monster, you can detach two and negate the summon. And if you do destroy that monster. Now, the, the, only co the only issue I have with this is that this isn't like Solemn Warning where it negates the effect that could summon a monster. This has to negate an inherent summon. Like this has to negate something that, you know, just summoned it, you know, that is summoned properly. Not, not something summoned off of a spell or trap card or something, something summoned off of an effect. It has to be something like Cyber Dragon. It has to be something like a Synchro Summon, Exceed Summon, you know, stuff of that nature for um, number C79 to be able to activate. And now, um, because it is a Chaos Exceed, if it has a number 79 Battling Boxer as material, uh, it also gains the effect where if, if an attack is declared involving your Battling Boxer monster and, a, and an opponent's monster, you can mill a battling boxer from hand or deck to graveyard, and if you do, attach that opponent's monster to him. Now, that is a really strong effect. Um, and it's on attack declaration, too. So that does mean that you would be able to redirect the attack after um, after his effect resolves. So you, you would get to attack into something, absorb the monster, and then attack again. Because the monster left before the... Uh, damage calculation start or damage step start battle step start or w w whatever the technical term is right and yeah so my only complaint about this card is that there is no you can overlay this on top of you know whatever meanwhile zeus is over here you can also exceed summon it by using an exceed monster you control if he said you can overlay him on top of regular number 79 right which is right here then the restrictions of promoter would make a lot more sense but um again i heard the rumor that a rank of magic is supposed to be coming out that won't affect what we're trying to do here in this resource loop combo if anything number c79 here isn't really a big part of it but um it's just something that i wanted to let you guys know before we continue so i got a few replays here now, most of these will be with one promoter because I just want you want you guys to see the power that this card has, right? So you tribute to, you get to summon Chief Second and Uppercutter. Uppercutter gets to search Switch Hitter. And because of Chief Second, you get a second normal summon for Switch Hitter, which would revive the promoter. And now you have four four level four monsters on field. And you can only go into battling boxers. You're you're very much restricted into battling boxer monsters at this point because you've you've resolved two effects that say, hey, only summon battling boxers for the rest of the turn. And basically you can go into King Dempsey, and Dempsey can search your cross counter counter trap card. And then you can make something like a 79. And 79 is going to be really important as you are going to see later. Um because of his ability to reattach materials from the graveyard. Now, he now promoter has an effect that when your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. That is an activated effect, which it activates, and um, it would be destroyed after it activates its effect, right? Because it is currently in hand. If we would have waited for it to activate its second effect, where you where it tributes for cost, it technically wouldn't be destroyed after we activate our cross counter meaning that cross counter's final effect would not be able to resolve. So just, you, you have to be really careful about that. So we destroy promoter and we get to summon another King Dempsey. So King Dempsey is going to add um, a switch hitter. And then um, in our next turn, we can detach uppercutter to uh, add, to, to reset the cross counter. So basically what we did there is we went into King Dempsey, King Dempsey searched a switch hitter so, so that we could start to revive our battling boxer monsters. And then we detached Uppercutter during our turn so that we can reset this cross counter. Right? 
And now we have a cross counter that basically says, hey, uh, when I activate, when you activate a monster effect, I'm going to destroy one. I'm going to make another Xyz monster. So we're going to normal summon Switch Hitter. Switch Hitter allows us to revive Promoter <clears throat> and Promoter uh, just, you know, summons any two battling boxers from deck. It it, it really does just keep going um, with the snowball. Now, I understand that this is like completely nib territory. And if they have it going first, um, yeah, you know, you're kind of assed out, but you're not always going to have Promoter going first. Promoter is only a what? Four out of um, four out of 40, you know, uh, and we also did, were able to go into C79 here. So basically what we did is that we got three monsters on field and then we used Promoter's effect to banish itself to allow us to increase the levels of all battling boxes we control by one, allowing us to hard make the C79. So you can either hard make it or we can wait for this rank of magic spell to come out so that we can um, potentially make it over a Dempsey that we no longer have any use for. Um, and yeah. Uh, we're gonna cross counter again here now you normally you would want to destroy your c79 for something like this You could destroy Dempsey and just wait until next turn But you know just think about this right like we were able to get all three Dempsey's out and We were able to negate a lot of effects reuse the same counter trap card twice And we could keep doing that like that's not something that just stops as soon as you you know You're finished with one or two Dempsey's now um, I know it, when I was testing this, I only had two switch hitter in my build. That's why I searched uppercutter here, but you would definitely search another switch hitter right here. Um, because that's the best way to start your turn, right? Uh, so load replay, and this is a uh, promoter again. Uh, the first three replays are all gonna be promoter. So it's gonna be the same thing. We go into chief second and uppercutter and chief second allows us to normal summon again, bring back promoter and we get to overlay into King Dempsey this time, right? and we're gonna go for the counter trap and we're gonna go for 79 again. And that's something that you may wanna pay attention to, right? So the way that I just detached for King Dempsey and then 79 allowed me to reattach that material, that's something that is very important. Um, so just keep, so keep paying attention to that, right? So I just wanted to showcase what happens if you, if you are unable to destroy the monster with cross counter here, right? Uh, cross counter is going to resolve. No battling box or exceed monster gets summoned. Now you still get to detach your upper cutter and reset this cross counter, but ultimately you get nothing off of that. Now, remember, this is all off of one card, right? It's not like you're going to be completely asked out. You're going to have a lot of space for non engine in this deck and not being able to summon off of the cross counter isn't going to be the end of the world. Here we go with a uh, promoter and this is going to be the last pure promoter replay. And so this is going to be the resource loop that I'm talking about, right? And this is all off of one battle box of promoter. So if you're watching this and you're wondering how to counter this deck, it is literally just ash the promoter. That's all you gotta do. You either ash up the promoter or you nib them once we get the five summons. That's the, the, those are your two options, right? So overlay into Dempsey, Dempsey searches a counter trap and then overlay to 79, right? That is the, that that's the one card start. Now imagine this is off of one card. Now imagine we had non-engine. Right. If we had non-engine, we'd have like ashes, imperms, all that good stuff in our hand as well. Possibly battling box of sparrows so that we can extend it to a third exceed. Not that you would need to, but just for follow up the next turn. Just remember, this is all off of one card. So again, assuming that you can negate the effect and destroy, what you're going to do is you're going to start with King Dempsey effect on summon, and then you're going to chain his effect so that you can detach this cross counter. Now look at what we're going to do here. Instead of adding, we're going to mill the upper cutter so that we can reset this cross counter. So that cross counter is going to be live even during our turn. So in case they have a hand trap or something, you know, like that's what makes this amazing. That's what makes this fun, right? Now, during your opponent's turn, I mean, now at the start of your turn, you can detach this upper cutter and then upper cutter can revive one of the promoters, right? Now, be, because you save this uppercutter that you would have detached during your opponent's turn and detach it during your turn instead, now you get this amazing follow-up of being able to summon promoter, right? Now, promoter effect, tribute, summon two, and overlay those two into your final King Dempsey. Now, I just want you to realize here that we have two King Dempseys that were summoned properly, 
and one that was summoned off of the effect of cross counter. And that is going to come up. So the, the one thing I can tell you is to make sure you always remember which ones were summoned properly and which ones were not. So um, we got to search King Dem So we got to make a King Dempsey before we even normal summoned. Before we even normal summoned, we got to make King Dempsey, allowing us to just search switch hitter and switch hitter to just say, hey, bring back number 79 in attack mode. <laughs> switch hitter summons any battling boxer monster from your graveyard, including Dempsey. So if you had a properly summoned Dempsey in your graveyard, he could just keep reviving Dempsey. It is just a resource loop that just, that just keeps going and going and going. Battling boxers are going to be fucking relentless once they get going. Like this could actually be a really good control deck because this is all off of one monster, which means that in theory, there's so much non-engine you can play to, to support this, you know, board going off. Um, and yeah, you know, because we activated switch hitter and because we activated promoter this turn, we wouldn't we would not be able to go into Zeus, but like in theory, eventually, um, we could get to a point where it's like we just have all our all of our exceeds monsters on field already, and we don't need to keep on making them, and we can just go into Zeus, you know, instead of relying on something like Switch Hitter or Promoter. So we're gonna keep going here, and now we're going to use 79's effect to reattach Uppercutter from Graveyard so that now all three King Dempsey's are live. And we've we've gone through three Dempsey's, so now you're starting to wonder what card we should summon off of Cross Counter. Well, let me, let me give you a hint here. You never summon 79 off of this thing because 79 needs two materials to activate. Um, I, my personal um recommendation would be either a lead yoke or a, a number 105 because these are the only other battling boxer monsters that can exist with just one material and it would be okay lead yoke can protect any of your battling boxer monsters from destruction but only one of them at a time and sarstesis negates the effects of any monster your opponent battles um and it also makes your opponent take all the damage from the battle too but yeah uh Let's keep going here, right? So let's just say for the sake of argument, right? We, my, my opponent has another starter and this is all they have. We get to uh, destroy one of our properly summoned Dempsey's, make a lead yoke, and then we can activate Dempsey effect to detach the uppercutter from the uh, Kaiser. And then uppercutter can activate to revive Dempsey and we get the search anyway. Look at this. This is great. Don't don't you guys love this? <laughs> this is uh, an amazing resource loop off of one card. Like this is like I don't know. Like the the, the recursion that this deck is going to have once it gets going is could is possibly going to be insane. I'm not you know saying this is going to be meta or anything, but you know this this seems like something that's going to be really good. So now let's go into our final replay now this is like the brick of all time right like this is like a really bricky hand and we're gonna try to turn this hand into something playable so because the chief second allows us to normal summon any battling boxer including itself so we get to go into dempsey here dempsey uh, search cross counter right and it's like okay well if dempsey's searching cross counter how the hell are we going to actually make um what what exceed monster could we possibly make well it's, it's really funny because if cross counter was not a counter trap, you, you would be able to chain um, Dempsey's effect to detach one. And then you would be able actually to use uppercutter at that point to reset the cross counter if it wasn't a counter trap. But it's a good thing that it's a counter trap because your opponent can respond to it. But it's also a bad thing because it like lowers the potential ceiling of this just being a one card resource loop where if if, if this was not a counter trap card, you would not need more than these two to keep on looping themselves. Like, it, it's actually kind of funny. So, okay. Our opponent activates a monster effect. We go cross counter. We summon 79. And... We very luckily drew into the uh, upper cutter here. We didn't search. Okay. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, we're able to revive our Dempsey... And, you know, we're able to make some plays. We go into uh, Chief Second, we go into Headgear. Headgear can now mill fucking uh, Uppercutter. 
um, Uppercutter being able to um, summon another Battling Boxer from Grave. And we can Dempsey effect, detach, cross counter, overlay into something like a Utopic Future. Yeah. But this is more just to show the, the potential of the deck. I'm still learning, but uh, I came across this discovery and I want to share it with you guys. So let me know what you guys think about Boundling Boxers moving forward. Um, this is not a optimal deck list, but I, 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 I would just want to show this to show you how much non-engine you can play, right? Assuming that Durandal is a correct card to play and you know, uh, you're know you playing something like Shadow, which Shadow is not m mandatory. Um, this is like 13 cards of non-engine, 13 slots of non-engine at the very least that you could play. And that's if you're playing Durandal because it might not even be worth it um, for this deck because you're not able to play things like, uh, you know, Red Lair or Renaud because of Promoter and Switch Hitter. So Durandal might not even be worth playing, if that makes sense. And you, unless you're going second, Durandal wouldn't be good for searching promoter because there needs to already be a monster on field to activate Durandal and if your opponent and if you're using your normal summon to search promoter then promoter is going to be dead in hand unless your normal summon was chief second so uh, again Durandal might not be correct to play in this deck either but um that is 16 slots of non-engine that, that you have here uh you're most likely going to need to play prosperity to you know multiply your chances of opening promoter but otherwise i think this is a pretty good place to stop and say like if if we open promoter or, or if we open a way into chief second plus uppercutter it's going to be an amazing deck right like i think durandal is more for chief second going into uppercutter than anything else because i think that would actually be the best play um if you open chief second plus durandal and then you can start your resource loop like that. It's 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 always going to be strongest if you start with a promoter. But I think if you do go uh, Dempsey, um, you know, start with Uppercutter, go into Dempsey, and you you can still make that play happen. So that's going to be all for today. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I know there's supposed to be another support card. I I do think I do wish a number uh, C79 had a better summoning condition. But um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.